of her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her controlling breast. I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and let all who love her be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess yes. to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have I greatly, greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done, done and what I have, and failed, what I have to do. failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous, grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I, Therefore ask, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie. Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped on Gilgah, on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, 
taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have been passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God was reconciling the word to himself in Christ, the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I will get up and go to my Father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes 
began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend to the swine. And he longed to eat his fill on the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field. And on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, but not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son arrives, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost 
and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Surely, the most remarkable of parables in the Christian faith. There are many, many layers to it. So of course, we have to focus on but one. The younger son, typically for whom the parable is named, the prodigal, is in fact a vampire. He demands his share of the inheritance from his father well prior to his father's death. He might as well have attached himself to the father's neck and sucked the life out of him. That's how outrageous his demand is. How disrespectful that he is toward his father. It's hard to overstate it. Later, the elder son will be equally disrespectful, wallowing in his pity. The father, of course, stands in for God. It gives you some idea of what Jesus thinks the quality of our relationship with God has been like. Not good. Now, when we are told that in response to the son's demand, the father divides his living, that word living connotes lifeblood, harkens back to the vampiric nature of the request. Interesting to note that the language of the parable suggests that the father divided his living between the sons. One goes, one stays, and both don't get it. So having consumed his father's livelihood, the boy then departs, we are told, for a distant country. No name is given, of course, in the parable. But you and I this morning can be very confident of the location of this land. For it is that place where we dwell. Everyone on earth, today and always, is a prodigal, a rebel. a product of murderers and thieves. It's where we dwell that this son goes to. That's the point. Now, when exiled from Eden, we are told that our primeval parents settled to the east thereof. Famous book by John Steinbeck, East of Eden. That's where we dwell. In fact, Cain, their eldest son, after he had murdered his brother, actually moved apart from his parents and he founded the city or land of Nod, N-O-D. Interesting word in Hebrew. So we'll refer to this land just that way, Nod. It means earth as we know it. So to Nod does the prodigal son fittingly come. The first urban dwelling of mankind was of course founded by rebels, murderers, thieves, and exiles, our our ancestors. The name in Hebrew, Nod, which sounds a bit odd to us, 
suggests an unstable place where one flits and wanders about in agitation, never quite comfortable. In fact, it is a land of trembling, of fear, where fear and anger and hatred rule, and scarcity abounds. So upon his arrival, it's not at all surprising that as all the money runs out and the party stop, the boy finds himself in the midst of a countrywide famine and he is quickly in need. Dire need, we're told. He sinks into slavery. And he's assigned a place with the swine, the most unclean of animals to the Jews, a fact that again emphasizes the God-forsaken nature of this land, our home, supposed home. Before he can even put down roots, which you can't and nod, the living taken from his father has been squandered and the boy is dissipated and near death. All of this is magnificently portrayed in the parable with short, pithy statements. And you get a good feel for our home, our land, to which we have been exiled. But now something happens in the parable that is unusual in this land. At the lowest of ebbs, we hear that the young man comes to his senses. He wakes up. He looks around him. And then he starts for his father's house. He reasons that even the lowest in my father's house have plenty to eat, are treated with dignity. Even the lowest, the slaves. And so he starts for home. A key component to him turning back toward the father is his understanding that he deserves nothing. That is not a normal attitude in Nod, where most of us think we deserve many things. But the boy comes to understand he deserves nothing. He has sinned against heaven and against his father and prays only that he can be accepted home as a slave. Ah, but things will be different than he thinks. The father has had his eye out looking for his son. And upon catching sight of him at a distance, it is the father who rushes out to meet the boy. He embraces him. No slave here, for the father puts on his son a ring, a sign of filiation, completely reconciled. I can't think of a parable where one can discern the nature of Christian mercy and forgiveness more than this one. For the father is a remarkable character, often not focused on. disrespected in a way no earthly father would put up with. He then rushes to embrace his son. This should give us great hope as Christians as to the nature of a judgment. We should not, of course, overlook the key here for us, 
the fact that the son came to his senses and what that means once you become a resident of Nod. That is much harder than it sounds. And the burden is on us. Father is ready to rush to us. But will we turn back to him? The key question. Few do in Nod. But gaining a proper sense of reality, seeing things as they are, he had turned back. The word for that is converted. It is hard, as I say, for everyone here is asleep, and almost no one knows it. Very dangerous thing. For us who dwell here, up is down and down is up. Boys are girls, girls are boys. Human life in the womb isn't really human. And anybody can marry anybody, as long as they say they love them. Peace is brought about with war. We've only been trying that one hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. How's it working? Not good. Here, the problem is often that the false is deemed true and that the true is avoided. And it's avoided at all costs due to its power to awaken us. Because once we awaken, like turning a light switch on in a dark room, we're shown that almost everything we value is an illusion. And few want that to happen. Where evil rules, that which is false is sought. It's defended. And it's rewarded. By contrast, seekers of the good and true are strung up on crosses. No wonder it's hard to wake up here. But thankfully, the mercy of God has shown to us in this parable by the Father. Now means that a light shines in this distant country however dimly. It helps us wake up. Where heretofore we could not have woken up on our own. It is the light of he, Jesus, who condescended to live and die among his lost brethren. To seek out this light this person, and to bask in his glory is to court truth and to turn the soul towards its rightful home, to be converted, which is the outcome of repenting. It is to regain one's senses and then to join the Father in rushing headlong together in a loving embrace.
This morning, we celebrate the second scrutiny. As you might recall from last week, our newly elect, who are to be fully initiated into the church through baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist at this year's Easter Vigil, undergo three scrutinies, one last week, one this week, one next week. First week, we present them with the creed. Next, next week, it'll be the Lord's Prayer. A scrutiny, as the name implies, is designed to offer them an opportunity of self-searching and repentance, that their process of conversion may continue, that they may efficaciously receive the fullness of God's sanctifying grace at baptism. They are celebrated in order to deliver the elect from the power of sin and Satan into which they, like us, were born. To protect them, to protect them against temptation and to give them strength in Christ, who alone is the way, the truth, and the life. At, that, at this point, I invite our elect to come forward with their sponsors. I invite them to please kneel. As, their, as an indication of their sign of inner repentance. We pray now in silence for our elect. We now turn to God with our prayers and petitions for these elect, for the church, and the needs of all in the world. That the church continues to be a strong voice for the oppressed and the outcast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That transformed in the spirit, these elect may seek those things that are holy and just, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that God may dispel darkness and be the light that shines in the hearts of our elect, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That freed by the power of the Spirit, the elect may put all fear behind them and press forward with confidence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of all nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this faith community reflect the light of Jesus in our prayers and lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers of, in our parish book of intentions and for those we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died and for the consolation of those who mourn their passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, source of unfailing light, by the death and resurrection of Christ, you have cast out the darkness of hatred and poured forth the light of truth and love upon the human family. Hear our prayers for these elect, whom you have called to be your adopted children. Enable them to pass from darkness to light, and delivered from the prince of darkness to live always as children 
of the light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, at your own baptism, the heavens were opened and you received the Holy Spirit to empower you to proclaim the good news to the poor and to restore sight to the blind. Pour out the same Holy Spirit on these elect who long for your sacraments. Guide them along the paths of right faith, safe from error, doubt, and unbelief, so that with eyes unsealed they may come to see you face to face. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Candidates, now come forward. And ladies, if you... you My friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God which you have shared with us this morning. Be assured as always of our continuing support and prayer for you. Continue to look forward ever more eagerly for that day when you will join us for the fullness of the Eucharistic celebration. Go in peace, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you journey in faith by the light of Christ. May you live by his gospel in spirit and truth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator, creator of heaven and, and earth, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his, his only, only Son, our Lord. Lord who was who conceived, conceived by, by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion hymn is number 529, Hosea. Come back to me with all your heart don't let fear keep us apart trees do bend though straight and tall so must we to others call long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life the wilderness to your 
your heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know long have I waited for your coming close me free and living deeply our new shall sleep secure with peace faithfulness will be your joy long have I waited for your coming home to me and living our new life. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord 
so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Stereum Fidei. Mortem tuam Annunciamus Domine, et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemur, Donec Veni. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now, at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Joseph, and all the saints, with our brethren and those of every race and tongue who, who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, for the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Oh. 
we'll wait. Thank you. My friends, let us now together pray in the words our Savior left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your day, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your day, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your day, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, my roof. but only, only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. You must rejoice, my son, for your brother was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. Our communion hymn is number 532 in Journey Books, Loving and Forgiving. Loving and forgiving are you O Lord, slow 
to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord, bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Loving and forgiving are you. O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God forgives us all our sins, feeling those who live in pain. Saving us from final death, God fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, Loving and forgiving are you. Good and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, rich in love. God remembers not our sins, forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. As heaven soars above the earth, so great the love of God for us. As far as east is from the west, the Lord takes our sins from us. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you.
Oremus. God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 662, Come My Way, My Truth, My Life. Come my way, my truth, my life. Such a way as gives us breath, Such a truth as ends all strife, Such a life as killeth death. Come my light, my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as men's in length, such a strength as makes his quest. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joy.